So we're at seven and four. So I'm going to get started because I want to give as much time as possible to our speakers. So I'm going to run through real quick. We do some announcements at the beginning. If you are not you've not heard yet or you're new, I'd like to invite you to join our Facebook group. It is uh, WordPress.accessibility. If you're on Facebook, you can just look for WordPress accessibility will come up. It's a good way to connect in between meetups and speak with people about looking whether you have interesting articles you want to share or if you are trying to solve a problem or you want someone to test it. We have some really great users that are super experienced in there. Um, Emma has just shared a link to it in the chat that might make it easier for anyone who wants to find our Facebook group. And then I'm still trying to promote our accessibility tools survey. So we are trying, my goal is to get at least 200 people to take it. And we're trying to get information about how different organizations with WordPress websites, but there's questions about non WordPress as well. But I really, our goal is WordPress websites to find out how they are approaching accessibility tools and accessibility decisions and testing at their organization. So if you go to equalizedigital.com slash survey, that should have been posted in the chat as well. Um, please go take it, please share it with your network. I think we've had about 75 people take it so far, which is awesome. But as I mentioned, our goal is about 200 people. Uh, if you're interested in getting emails in between meetups, we have a email newsletter that goes out bi-weekly. Our name for it is Focus State. So you can subscribe to that on our website and it has links to accessibility news, resources, events, so our events, but also other accessibility events that you can join from around the web. Uh, so if you're interested in keeping up with what's going on in accessibility, uh, it's a great resource. And then a quick comment on um, accessibility in general at, of the meetup and sponsorships. Unfortunately, our um, ASL sponsor will not be continuing in January. So we are actively looking for a sponsor to cover the cost of interpretation because we really think it's important to be able to do that. But as of right now, just a heads up, we may not have interpretation at our meetups in January. I'm trying very hard to find them. If you know anyone who might be interested in sponsoring, please let me know. And who are we? Who am I? This person who's talking to you if you've never been here before. I am Amber Hines. I'm the lead organizer for the meetup. I'm the CEO of a company called Equalize Digital. We are a WordPress VIP agency that does custom website builds and does accessibility consulting. And we have a plugin for WordPress websites called Accessibility Checker that is a testing or auditing tool to help you test uh, your websites or even your products for accessibility. And you can find us at equalizedigital.com or we're on Twitter and you can tweet us at Equalize Digital. Our sponsors tonight, we have two. WP Engine is sponsoring our live captions, uh, which is super important. If you're not familiar with WP Engine, they are a WordPress technology company. They own both WP Engine, their first brand, and now Flywheel, which are both hosting platforms. They also are the owners of Studio Press and the Genesis themes. So if you are, oh, and local by WP, which is a tool that developers can use to develop locally and spin up WordPress sites. So we always like to encourage people to tweet a thank you to our sponsors. So if you have time, you can find them at WP Engine on Twitter and just say, thank you for sponsoring the live captions for the accessibility meetup, because that helps to encourage them to want to continue. And then our ASL interpretation sponsor for this meetup is Leon Stratford. Leon is a developer at Stratic, which is a headless WordPress hosting company. And he is the creator of WP2 Static. He also maintains a theme um, for Hugo, which is a different CMS, and he's in the process of moving that over to WordPress. And he has very kindly been sponsoring our ASL interpretations and some of our live captions um, for uh, the last four months, I want to say. So you can find him at ljs.dev on Twitter. So please also tweet a thank you to him. 
Uh, I definitely know he sees them because he like retweets them and he like hearts them and stuff. So, um, so it's been very generous of him to cover the cost of interpretation. So real quick, two upcoming events. In January, we are going to have Carl Groves, who's of Tenon, sorry, his website is Tenon.io, and I started to move it into his name, uh, Tenon, which was recently joined forces with Level Access. Uh, he will be talking about accessibility overlays and what um, the reality of what they can do is and what some of the things that they say they can do that maybe are less truthful <laughs> or hopeful rather than reality. Um, so that will be on Thursday. Oh, I didn't update my days on my slides. Sorry, guys. That will be the first Thursday of the month in January, which I believe is January 6th. And it will be at 8 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central in the U.S. if you are in my time zone. And we have a few other time zones listed on here. And then our Monday, which will be the third Monday. And I don't know the dates on that one. Oh, January 17th. Thank you, Emma, for throwing that in chat. So on Monday, January 17th, Carrie Fisher will be talking about accessible typography. So how to choose fonts, spacing, line height, padding, how wide your columns can be, everything related to typography and making sure that your content is readable, which should be as applicable to a designer or a content creator as a developer as well. So that brings me to today's topic. I'm so excited about this because it's the first in a series that we're hoping to do where we provide live testing and feedback to plugin and theme developers because our goal is to be able to help them make their products more accessible so that in turn all of the websites that use their products can become more accessible it's sort of our like bottom up <laughs> approach to accessibility i think you know making it easier for the users and business owners who maybe don't even know what accessibility is or haven't heard of it to have more accessible websites so we have uh two main speakers then i'm also going to introduce the product that we'll be talking about today. So I'm going to start with Joyce Oshida, who reached out to me. She's been she's attended some of our meetups and uh, you may have heard her introduce herself at a previous event. Uh, she's a certified professional in web accessibility. Prior to blindness, she earned her degree from UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business, and she has been a consultant serving Fortune 500 clients and recently founded an independent resource and support group for people who are traveling through vision loss. She also has a WordPress blog called Wisely Blind, which is used to elevate voices of the blind community. And also, um, I think I failed to mention that Joyce works at VMware. So also from VMware today, we have Chris Lane, who's also a certified professional in web accessibility. And he has over 10 years of experience in the accessibility field. His technical skills include ARIA, React, Angular, and general front end development, as well as connecting the accessible user experiences to code fixes. Chris has a deep understanding of the developer experience, the challenges of retrofitting accessibility issues when accessibility is not considered part of the initial design. And thanks to Chris, VMware's accessibility team has a fully accessible tracking and reporting tool that he developed to help Joyce work better in their organization. So those will be our two main testers and speakers leading the conversation today. And then I'm really excited to introduce, uh, I don't, I failed to put Matt's information up here. I apologize, Matt. Um, but the plugin that we will be focusing on today is Facet WP, which is one that we've used a bunch on client websites. Um, it's used on over uh, 40,000 websites. I think that says 40K with the space uh, users, but over 40,000 websites use this plugin. And if you aren't familiar with it, it's definitely worth checking out. It helps you if you wanted to have advanced filtering or search. I know it works with WooCommerce, any sort of custom post types, a lot of different ways that you could imagine it. And you can learn more about FacetWP at facetwp.com. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to spotlight our speakers and let them take over. Just give me just one second. Oops. 
So Joyce, Chris, Matt. And then let me also, before you begin real quick, just change out our interpreter. Oh no, I think I might have accidentally booted Sarah from our mission. <laughs> yeah. I, I am good at technology only sometimes. <laughs> Hopefully she will rejoin. this whole meeting, so uh, <laughs> yes. it's been great. So I'm going to remove my spotlight and I'm going to let you all take over. Okay. Hi, I'm Joyce. Thanks, Amber, for introducing us. Um, Chris and I are, are here from where we work together at VMware, but prior to that, um, I was navigating assistive technology for over 10 years as a user. I was uh, slowly going blind due to a, a degenerative eye condition. And one thing I found was when I transitioned from like magnification and text-to-speech and went to use uh, screen meters full time, I realized a lot of things were blocked for me. Um, I used to do a lot of transactions and things on the web and all of a sudden those things were not available. And I kept thinking to myself, I just want them to see through my eyes. And um, I'm so proud of Matt for coming on to actually uh, to let me show him that. But it's hard as, as someone who does use assistive te technology and you know, accessibility is not just about screen readers, but I can tell you since the web is a visual interface and our interaction is non-visual, um, it's probably the most complex to understand. So um, I'm excited to be able to show it to you today. And we're gonna go through a lot of things. I'm so happy to have Chris um, here with me. He's um, an excellent educator. And I always um, love how he's able to, to bring alive the topics and, and connect um, um, the people that we meet to solutions that can be implemented. So um, let me see, I'm gonna share my screen here. Joyce and I work together and uh, I have a tendency to talk too much. So <laughs> what I want to do is avoid that. He gets excited. I do, but Title is a lot of this is about her experience. Um, and Matt, if you run out of time, I'll catch up with you, you know, on uh, update you on Windows up arrow. didn't get to you. Okay, so I want to just show you, I'm actually part of this meetup um, because as I was navigating vision loss, uh, my friend Prasuna and I just talked a lot about the different resources that I didn't have and the information that I didn't have. And we just thought, you know, someday we'll start um, some kind of site to share the information that I had gained um, and the voices that have helped me through my own journey. So this is a real super simple site and it's um, simple, sim partly because we couldn't find a lot of accessible options. Start here to discover the unique so I have vision. some nice headings here. The journey through vision loss colon finding a voice, wisely blind log heading level two. And then I gotta show you my alt text. Wrapping to top the journey through vision and then we'll go straight into voice, support and community heading level two. If you guys get time, I uh, would love for you to listen to the audio project, um, which is the uh, voices of just people navigating vision loss. Wrapping to top, a rocky trail winds through a dense forest of bright green bushes and trees ahead. Text on image reads, quote the journey through vision loss, finding a voice, support and community, quote graphic. So that's a long alt text. Um, but it's just supposed to give a, a feel for what um, what that picture is. And so anyway, I just wanted to share that a little bit. And then Matt, we're going to go straight to your site. <laughs> well, I have the demo. Let's go. Control two cars demo vertical bar facet WP cars demo. OK, so we've got a lot to cover here, up arrow. but I'm just going to I have the cars demo up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reload this page and I'm using JAWS. And um, I'm going to just reload this page. You'll hear the page load. It'll read the title tag for the page. Then it'll begin um, 
giving information about links, um, regions, and then read the content from top to bottom, left to right. So let me just start this. Control L, toolbar, address and search bar, enter. Cars demo vertical bar facet WP page has nine headings and 28 links. Cars demo vertical bar facet WP visited link graphic logo, visited link features, visited link pricing, visited current page link demos, link add dash ons, link help center, link my account, visited link. By heading level one cars demo when you click on BMW, all other facets refresh to show only relevant choices. Left parent 143, right parent checkbox not checked. Left parent 9, right parent checkbox not checked. Left parent 114, right parent checkbox not checked. Left parent 11, right parent checkbox not checked. Link occur ILX from dollar twenty seven thousand seven hundred fifty MPG colon twenty four city thirty four Y power colon two hundred one HP one hundred eighty FT slash LP. Link occur MDX from dollar fifty three thousand four hundred MPG colon nineteen city twenty six Y power colon two hundred nine. DHP 267 FT slash LP Link Akura NSX from dollar one hundred fifty seven thousand five hundred MPG colon twenty one city twenty two Y power colon five hundred seventy three HP four hundred seventy six FT slash LP Link Akura RDX from dollar forty five thousand seven hundred MPG colon twenty two city twenty eight Y power colon two hundred seventy two HP two hundred eighty FT slash LP Link one Link two Link three Link Link seventy Link greater greater combo box state left parent oldest right parent heading level three make a curl left parent six right parent checkbox not checked Alpha Romeo left parent three right parent checkbox not checked Audi left parent nine right parent checkbox not checked BMW left parent twenty two right parent checkbox not checked Buick left parent five right parent checkbox not checked Cadillac left parent six right parent checkbox not checked Chevrolet left parent fourteen right parent checkbox not checked Chrysler left parent two right parent checkbox not checked Link C twenty seven more heading level three driven wheels front wheel drive left parent one hundred eight right parent checkbox not checked all wheel drive left Left parent 89 right parent checkbox not checked. Rear wheel drive left parent 61 right parent checkbox not checked. Four wheel drive left parent 19 right parent checkbox not checked. Heading level 3 price 14,730.00 left right slider 255,730.00 left right slider dollar 14,730 m dash dollar 255,730. Reset button. Heading level 2 your site deserves the best filtering. Visited link demo. Visited link by. Visited link graphic logo. Link my account. Link support. Link sales. Link about us link. Copyright 2021 facet WP LLC dot. Link terms of use. X heading level 3 vehicle type heading level 3 make heading level 3 driven wheels heading level 3 base MSRP. MSRP. Okay. Um, um, I'm sorry. I, I, I know. Uh, okay. I'm going to try not to talk as much as I can. Um, <laughs> you know what? We heard some stuff about MSRP and like stuff we can't read here. Something I heard some stuff we didn't see on the screen. It's something I'm going to mention. There's a uh, there's a flyout. Looks like I found like some flyout content. Um, a screen reader can read everything and does read everything in the DOM, unless there's um, unless you hide it with aria hidden. But uh, yeah, so she was reading the flyout content that isn't visible. So that is a heading uh, level three driven. Weekend. It's this stuff right here. Heading level three make. Heading level three vehicle type. Yeah. So yeah, we could see it. Yeah, it's it's this flyout content. So RA hidden equals true. We'll just hide that. Uh, so it's an easy fix. Okay. Hey Joyce and Chris. Um, this is Matt. So again, thank you so much for for participating in this. Um, as you know, I I'm not super familiar with the accessibility world, <laughs> and that's one of the reasons we're here. Um, I guess my first question is, so I'm guessing JAWS is the application you're using to basically scan the HTML and then just output as, as speech. local as speech. Yeah, and, and all this right. happened right now. She's done nothing. She hasn't tried to read the page or anything. That mm -hmm. was automatic, right, Joyce? Just read Yeah, it just box. loads the page and reads it. So when it, the page could... loads, yeah, there, it's, our JAWS will read from top to bottom. The cursor, yeah. So okay, so when you get to the page, will it read the entire page or just your view? Well, if she doesn't or... interrupt it, if she doesn't interrupt it. Yeah. So if she okay. just goes there, hands away from the keyboard. That's, that's be... a lot to, <laughs> to hear. Well, Is so that... typically, I guess, so typically, let me just kind of go through what I would do. I would probably not have it read the whole page. Um, I would get an idea of what's on the page and then... Mm -hmm. Um, then I would just start from the top. Cars demo vertical bar what I would do first is kind of see what are the headings on this page. And I'm expecting the headings to provide um, sections. Cars demo heading level one. Okay. Cars demo. Make heading level three. Make. 
Driven wheels heading level three. Driven wheels. Price heading level three. Price. So just factors that I could filter with. Your site deserves the best filtering heading level two. I actually thought this was kind of okay. So I guess there's this. This seems like the main topic of the page. Visited link by. Visited link graphic logo. It, it seemed like the order seemed a little strange to me. Vehicle type heading level three. And then here I have vehicle type. Make heading level three. Make. Driven wheels heading level three. Base MSRP heading. What was that? Visually what? hidden content again. So she's actually now at the bottom. She's reading content from the flyout, and that that needs to be hidden from her technology as well. Yeah. The top car. Okay. All right. So then I knew that there was a list of. Um, results and then there were some check boxes so probably filtering options right so mm -hmm. let me just the order on this page is not that clear to me so what i'm gonna do is just uh crawl down the page with the arrow key Cars demo version. not ideal but if it's not clear i don't want to miss anything so visited link graphic logo i think matt's so brave <laughs> for putting himself out here so thank you visited link features Okay, features. Visited link pricing. Visited current page link demos. Link add dash odds. Link help center. I'm just crawling down this page. She's link moving. She's just crawling. She's just moving the uh, screen reader's cursor uh, through each line in the DOM. Visited link. Bye. Heading level one cars demo. Okay. When you click on BMW, all other facets refresh to show only relevant choices. Okay, so it read the line. I could actually just read by word. You click on BMW comma all other facets. Okay. Refresh to show only relevant choices, period. Left parent 143, right parent checkbox not checked. Okay, now this, um, I have no idea what. Left parent 9, right parent checkbox There's nine. Not checked. Left parent 114, yeah, right it. parent. So here, um. So Matt, see how she's just hearing 143, right? Yeah. So the actual the actual images aren't aren't pulling up oh. in, in Jaws. Yeah, so what we have is like, and I didn't tell her. I've been trying. I, we've looked at the page a few <laughs> times. So she's actually <laughs> been here a couple of times, right? I think that a fresh user, I mean, if she had been the first time, wasn't she? Is a di more difficult experience to visit the page, but it's mostly because the setup content isn't complete, really. You know, so she doesn't know what's happening on the page. Mm -hmm. what, you know, what 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 the facets how they really perform, but also um, so there's some icons, Joyce. So these n numbers you're hearing parentheses, they're uh, quantities for um, each of the uh, types of vehicles. You know, the the counts of each type of vehicles that showed up in this current facet state. So we've got 143. It looks like there's some kind of icon for a sports car. Also, the oh. icons are kind of light. So light gray against white is a little dangerous. I'm not good at eyeballing the contrast, um, but um, you want to yeah, get that. They're a little light. Um, but anyway, then we got minivans, I think, and Jeep kind of things. And then, oh, wait, no. Um, and, you know, there's four classes of automobile, automobiles. Looks like trucks, Jeep trucks. So, Matt, do you have? icons there for the types of vehicles? Yes, so that facet is a, is a vehicle type. Um, so there's car, minivan, SUV, and truck. And this is actually, um, so the plugin itself has certain um, out of the box facet types. There's check boxes, radio buttons, mm -hmm. um, drop downs, so on and so forth. This one is actually a radio facet, but it's been customized with JavaScript and with CSS um, to kind of look like icons instead of as text. And in doing this, I totally, um, I totally didn't even realize that. Matt, if you, you almost nailed it, Matt. You almost nailed it. It just has a weird, um, so I pasted all the details for you in the chat. Basically, ARIA label is really strong. And then there's also, you know, there's, I don't want to go too deep. There's an accessible name computation. I mean, things can, uh, uh, an accessible name for a component can be drawn from its contents, uh, but ARIA label can override everything. And basically you just have an ARIA label that expresses quantity only. So it's just a small fix. I pasted the details um, and the, uh, uh, yeah. 
there it's all in chat. So I kind of did these one by one. So easy fix for that. Um, okay, so let's go. keep going. Left go. parent 11, right parent checkbox not checked. Okay, and let me see if I should check. Should I check? Let me check some of these. Let me see if the checks work. So I might chime in for a second real quick because Glenn mentioned in the chat that the parentheses on the numbers is more about visual presentation and doesn't really need to pre pronounce because he's hearing left parent nine parent. So I don't know if you have an opinion on that. Would you hide those or would you just keep those parentheses as being read out? I think it's fine to read out because um, it gives me, it's not part of the title, it's actually a quantity, right? And it's pretty common, I hear that pretty common. Because if it just said auto nine, right, then Left pair and 11, right pair and checkbox, not check. Parentheses have meaning to you, right? Yeah. And here uh -huh. they have, we're expressing quantity, so. Yeah, more so than, I think quantity is important, but advantage. in this case, would it make sense if if that quantity was elaborated a little bit more, like instead of left parentheses, one, four, three, right parentheses, should it say, you know, 143 matches? Like, is there a way to... Oh, uh, okay. That make so, things easier? You can always... I, we don't we don't have a lot of time, but you can always dial in language and content like this with ARIA labels, right? But the idea here, oh, okay, yeah. So, and, and you could even decide that you don't like that. I guess you could say 143 cars, nine vans. Well, that's what the icons mean, but um, I don't think the parents are much of an issue. It's not an accessibility issue. Left pair and 11, right pair and checkbox not checked. Okay, let me check one of these. Okay, I'm going to check this one. Space, cars, demo, vertical, bar, facet, WP. Left pair and 11, right pair and checkbox not checked. Cars, demo, vertical, bar, facet, WP. Okay, I think it reloaded. Visited link graphic logo. Let me go so, back. Yeah, so she has to kind of figure out. Um, I, the instructions feature. were built out a little better. I mean, she... Um, in the beginning of the call, I was alluding to telling Matt about how uh, this kind of pattern uh, where the whole page changes um, uh, after checking a checkbox could, could potentially violate a WCAG success criterion called on input. Um, and there's some nuance here. And I think the cars in, I think the cars, the cars example is fine because the nuances between changing content or changing context. And I think we're still in a car's context, but but Matt, I am afraid of potential misuse of your plugin, right? And I, um, it could be easy to stick a checkbox in here that kind of change context. So um, I'll throw it all in chat. I just, uh, um, I just advise just um, possibly adding a help section about not misusing it. I think I'm. I think one of the things that I had trouble with the checkbox. Okay, let me go back. Visited link pricing. Is that it's. Visited current page link demos. It's I have to find where I was. Link add dash on. Link help. Link my account. Visited link by heading level one cars demo. When you click on DM left parent one hundred forty three right parent checkbox not checked. Left parent nine right parent checkbox not checked. Left parent one hundred fourteen right parent checkbox not checked. Left parent eleven right parent checkbox checked. Okay, that's the one I checked. Um, it's just hard to, you know, keep track of that. Link Chevrolet, Colorado. Okay, so let's see. Left pair and 11 right pair, Link Chevrolet, Colorado. This must be where, from dollar thirty-one thousand seven. where the list starts, the results start. Is that right, Matt? I think so, yeah. And then right after that, it would go to the, the make on the sidebar. Um, oh. So there's... Oh. I'm still on the page. So on the page at the very top, there's there's the icons for the vehicle type. Um, okay. Right below that are the results. And so there's two columns, two rows of results. Um, on the right sidebar, um, there's a sort box. And then below that is a make section where it has um, a list of different um, brand names oh. of vehicles. So um, Matt, oh, like, yep. you know why um, she doesn't know where the search results are? We just need a heading there. I think that yeah. would, so we that have would help. Search results heading Left there. Pair and right pair and checkbox. So if there's a, like this section right here is um, like a filtering the type, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. there, 
And then this next Lake Chevrolet, Colorado. If there could be a heading right above this that says um, a results or search results or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be that would make a lot of sense here. Okay. Can and I then ask one okay. Thing, real quick? Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Joyce, are you able in JAWS to turn on a visual focus? Because I don't know that there's focus states everywhere on this particular website. And I mean, it's maybe fine because we don't know where you are <laughs> without listening, which is uh, where you are. But if you could turn that I on, actually, in JAWS, it might help viewers. Is that I a setting or no? I, yeah, I visual focus, actually have I don't want to avoid that term. So uh, focus is uh, focus state. Yeah. Well, no, it's actually not what's happening when it's a complicated term, but it's not what's happening when she moves that carrot, you know, like when she, it only happens, a focus happens for everyone when they press the tab key. And that only goes to like links and buttons and stuff you, you know, you can click on. Yeah, but oh, she's just okay. talking about a jaw setting. I actually think I have I, No, I know what she's talking about. Yeah. I just, uh, no. just wanted to clear up the terminology. Okay. I, <clears throat> I, uh, David Middleton here, um, I'm a senior accessibility consultant level access. Um, Amber, were you talking about the visible focus indicator, the, the, the rectangular box that would go around where the keyboard focus is to show the user where they are on the page? That's, yeah, that's what I was talking about because I think that she's highlighted a few actionable items and there isn't a focus state. Oh, let me visible. tap to it. Link Chevrolet, Colorado. Chevrolet oh, okay, I guess there is one. Okay. I, if I tab to it, it, you'll see it. It's easier with a screen reader off than that. Sorry, I mean, um, but that's a that's a great point. Thank you. Hey, Chris, I had a kind of a question for you about JAWS in general. Um, so when you're navigating normally from one page to the next, I'm assuming JAWS has some sort of indicator that says, hey, you're navigating to this page or that page. Is that correct? What do you mean by navigating to this page or that page? Like if you, if you click on a link, like let's say that one of those cars on this page is clickable and you clicked it and it takes you to a different page, hypothetically, mm -hmm. would it- Oh, the page would, it, would load. Would it say to you like a new page well, loaded? Well, okay, or? so first of all, like um, just- uh, And I'd love to see the level access people. <laughs> yeah, I'm from there too. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, so the link semantically means navigation. So okay. when, you know, and I know that that's kind of a blurred topic these days, you know, you got single page apps, but she, I mean, a blind screen reader user activated a link sort of navigation. So it still semantically means navigation. Okay, so Matt- mean, at mean action. So the user- Matt, what the, the question that you're asking is what I know. And remember when we started and I loaded the page? and I heard the title of the tag and then it started reading the page. The mm -hmm. same thing would happen if I activate a link that opens a new page. Okay, because I guess my, my main question though is on a page like this where there is no page refresh, where it's, where it's all happening via Ajax, like you click on a, on a checkbox, mm -hmm. the results load dynamically. Um, how, is, how does that process, how is that different than when you normally click on? a normal link. Oh, okay. Well, I noticed that the, it seemed like the page did. Let's see. From dollar forty thousand link chef power. Wait, can you rephrase that, Matt? I mean, a, a nor I'm sorry. Say that again. Versus what? Versus a normal link. I was busy, too busy saying hi to Thomas. Oh, sure. Um, so when you click on something via Ajax and it refreshes the page. Oh, it doesn't matter. That see, that doesn't matter. So that's kind of what I was trying to say. Semantically. The user doesn't care if it's from Ajax or not, right? So semantically, it still means like navigation. But if you think the link is the wrong tool for the job, like let's say like no navigation happened here, then you switch it up with a button. So it's a subtle semantic thing. And you know what? Links have not been used correctly for a long time and we just sort of accept it, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it gets sort of arbitrary between using a link and button. Anyway, I don't want to derail link the topic. Colorado. Um, yeah, Chris, let's keep... Chris um, I think what Matt's asking is uh, because you're doing, it's a single page app. So you're reloading a portion of the content within the page when a user clicks on a control. Um, that's something that's the um, on input, uh, the WCAG rule there. Um, you don't want to change the context of the page without letting the user know. Um, so one of the things that you may I hear, I totally disagree though, because I think that it's not a change. Okay. 
it well, is a change it, of context. You have 143 cars and you filter. Now you have 11 cars. Yeah, but a filter so, is not a change of context. And I'm sorry, Dave. But also, it's a change of content. You can argue. Yes, yeah, so Matt, right this there. is the challenge. Well, you, David, you're if making I can finish point. my point. You, you're making my point, Matt. For, for Matt. Uh, David, you're making my point for Matt. This pattern, okay. it's actually this kind of, I opened up this talk, is kind of questionable, you see, because of this content first context thing. We see this, you have two accessibility people from the same company. We're actually having a debate over this. So if you don't want to ever have this debate, you control this with a button and you don't change things when you when some checkboxes are selected, right? So basically you let the user, all users kind of queue up, you know, their, uh, their fashion. Like their criteria. Like David, like... I'm sorry, thank you very much. Cause that's- just, Yeah, well that's, totally, yeah, that's a, totally that's a valid way point. to do it. I, I, I was spent the whole day using to challenge Live. that nuance, right? You know, judge content. And I saw other cases where these facets could be greatly misused. So you totally made my, uh, made my point, David. Well, I was also <laughs> going to suggest using ARIA Live. Um, I, I don't want to add that level of complexity. complexity yeah. Yeah, you but, know. yeah, if you if you make a button that says filter results, that would accomplish, that would fix all of this because then the user would know that they're changing something yeah, about the exactly. page. Exactly. Yeah. But Matt to, so, David, like, Matt, to David's point, right? Like, the more complex we get, like, if you insist on this interaction, right? I mean, for the level access, I mean, David, we have to create solutions, right? And we have other tools in ARIA. But um, yes, this is a this is a, um, a controversial pattern you're using, right? So. Um, you know, that's why I'm warning against it. And I, I was actually, David, I don't know if you were there. I was actually asking him to make a help page edition, you know, to talk about not doing this, you know, or not misusing his um, his WordPress plugin. But yeah. I'd be, I'd be curious to know. So this is something we've been doing when we build websites for clients with filters like this, because the reason why sighted users like the Ajax is they don't ever get in a scenario where they've chosen a bunch of combinations that return zero results, right? Well, we so get that. I'm That's curious why we always know. optimize for the sighted. See, that so can well, can I just finish? Hold on, I was going to say something. I'm curious, Joyce, on your opinion on this. So we've been doing something where we will have Ajax for sighted, but at the top of the filters, we have a button that says enable accessibility mode. It's a link with a roll of button and it reloads the page with the parameter in the URL that then has all those submit buttons and turns off Ajax. So would that well, be Well, I guess a couple of things, like a couple of things, no? just, um, it, it sounds like the experience would be better if there's a button, but to be honest with you, I hate that um, concept of enable accessibility mode because what does that mean? Like, how do I know what that will do? And who is it accessible for? So would it be better if it just said, turn off live searching? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, say what it does instead of, you know, what you're trying to achieve because, uh, okay, it's accessible. Let's make it accessible for someone deaf by turning on this mode. Very good point, thank you. <laughs> Hey, David, Joyce. can you can you talk I, a little um, more about? I think that um, would still put you in a bind. And David, I'm going to call you. I mean, uh, you still would have one mode that violated on input. I was I was curious about what what exactly Aria Live does. Um, it, is it, like it, it? It you put that on an element uh, to simplify it. I, I would definitely research it and learn about it before you start using it. Uh, but you would put that on an element such as the, the search results, the, the quantity of, of results that are returned to the user. And then as that element changes programmatically, it's going to relay that back to the user. There's two states. Out. Yeah, there's two states. There's polite and there's assertive. Assertive will interrupt. Polite will wait for a natural break. And I've done these before where I've put the the quantity of the, the search results on an ARIA live. So every time you filter, it'll say there's now nine results, there's 11 results, there's you know zero results. Please review your, your selections and try again. 
Um, and it's a way that, that as the user is selecting those different filters, they're getting the feedback that something on the page, their search results on the page are being changed and they can select or deselect things to get the appropriate number that they wanna see. That solves- I would say like addition to that, ARIA Live happens after something, like it's a, you know, triggered by event, right? And so basically an element gets populated in the messaging actually it interrupts with the, or well, I mean, it gets queued in uh, potentially interrupts depending on the setting, like David said, if it's assertive or polite. Um, but uh, I think you need to also tell the user how this is gonna behave up front before they start using it. And it's kind of done on this page, Joyce. I, like I was trying to say earlier, the, the boilerplate content or the sample content, it isn't really fleshed out. Up there, at the very top of the page, it says if you click BMW, um, then everything's going to change. Uh, basically, some more, more specific, you know, a more specific description of how this page yeah. is going to work. Um, That's true. And then, you know, I like to have. I think words should be. I think instructions should be visible. I mean, you could make hard design choices and say that you can make these instruction instructions invisible. Um, I, I agree with I agree with the instructions. However, if you announce the number of search results, and as the user filters that, it keeps telling you, "Hey, now there's a hundred search results." Yeah, you'll get it. Now you'll there's get eleven. It. it becomes intuitive. I think you... part. No, I'll actually let me let me explain. Yeah, the, if you provide the information and it's announcing out, but if I still need to go find where I was every time I select something. It's still going to make the the announcements don't help that much. Right, and that's a um, user focus issue and, and paying attention to where you are and, and leaving it in a place where you understand where you're at and you're not jumping to a different part of the page when you select something. Right, what happens with this application is every time you check a button, Check a uh, left parent 114 right parent checkbox not checked. Okay, I'm gonna check this one. I think it all goes back to on input. Parent 114 saying, right yeah. parent checkbox not checked. Cars demo vertical bar facet WP. It uh, takes me back to the top. So yeah, which is incorrect. Yeah. Visited link graphic logo. So that's the to me that's that's like the bigger problem than yeah. announcing out the results. So. The announce the aria announce live announcement. It really adds a lot of complexity to the code. What's it? It does provide information. What's more important is can I control the content and control where I'm on the page? So I want to be able to like visited link feature visited link visited link add dash on link let's see, let me see where I'm back link my account visited link bye. Heading level when you click on DM the left parent 143 right parent checkbox not checked. Okay. Left parent nine right parent checkbox not checked. Left parent 114 right parent checkbox checked. Okay, that one's checked, right? Um, so I just want to know that that was checked and that I'm still here. And then I could go down, um, use a heading, and then go down to the results. Left parent 11 right. Parent. I don't need a whole lot of announcements custom announcements. I need to have control over what's happening on the page and control on where, how to get to the content. Right. And back to Chris's original point about the complexity of ARIA Live, putting a button that says filter results now gives you that, solve that ability. That, yeah. yeah, you can select what you want. The, the, the challenge to that is, are you going to select something that has no results? And do you want to go through the extra steps of of picking and choosing, hoping that you get the right uh, group of selections to get the uh, the list to show up. You know, there's another distinction too here um, that uh, I think David and I, like we both want you to achieve AA compliance here. I mean, that, that's at a minimum, right? And then it after that, you know, you can, then you can think usability, I guess, on for the screen reader, but like, um, you know, uh, I just don't want your uh, plugin to be misused, right? So, um, I mean, the car pages, they, uh, um, I don't think these are context changes when you select one of these because we're still in this cars context. And I know Dave and I are going back and forth. So that's like, you're safer with a button. 
you're safer with a button here. I think like half the accessibility tester, like if you, you know, people will make sites with this and they'll get their sites potentially tested by accessibility companies and some testers are gonna flag on input, you know, even when you think you're not changing context, right? And, you know, that's why I'm saying that your best defense for your plugin is to document, especially, you know, accessibility decisions like this, which are, you know, playing the nuance of WCAG when it offers it, you know, which is in, in on input that I pasted in there, there's a nuance between, or there's a distinction between content and context, but. Uh, so Matt, um, I bet your customers like the auto filtering, huh? I was just about to say that. Um, so the, one of the biggest benefits of faceted search versus versus normal filtering is that when you when you do click on an option, um, automatically it shows all the it, other right? results narrow down as well. And so when yeah. you turn off the auto refresh, I think David was kind of hinting at that. When you turn that off, um, it is a lot more possible to show kind of, we call them dead end pages, just pages with no results. Um, and that's kind of, that's one of the main goals of the plugin, just to kind of mm -hmm. avoid that. This yeah. is why That's I brought it up at first because I, I actually read that. I actually thought this was the main point of the plugin. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why you did so much accessible, but we are on that precipice of um, potential violation with um, on input because it, it actually on input, it really explicitly calls out checked off check boxes by if you check them, you should not have a change in context. So, right. well, I wonder, Chris, why can't he manage? if he could manage focus so I'm not continuously trying to find where I was. It doesn't matter with the wake, the wake egg uh, like criterion is basically saying that you can't check a checkbox and change context, regardless of live region usage or, or even moving focus. Um, but in some ways, I mean, we kind of talked about it. Is it really changing? context because i know that i do I not have, think it is i do not i think don't think so. case, i don't think it is either. we just had a debate over it right right and, and because so, we're on the filtering cars page so yes yes I know, what if i put in a checkbox here that said boats and you just clicked it and all of a sudden bam we're in the boats page i know it shouldn't have been there but it's really <laughs> easy to make a checkbox change context here really easy and it's really easy for someone to misuse this plugin and do that and then make your plugin give it a really bad reputation. <laughs> well, um, the plugin is going to filter results of a certain type. I mean, that's, it's well, not there's another be... way to do this. I'm sorry. Then redo your plugin with tabs because tabs are expected to, for you to arrow through them and they're expected to offer you a uh, different context. Right. I well, think... I want to, I, I will point out that the, um, the, the on input, it's it's changing the context without the user's awareness. So that's where ARIA Live makes the user aware that there's been- a, Oh, a that's where instructions context. make them aware too. ARIA yeah. Live yeah. happens but before. ARIA Again, Live we want to try and be you know, careful about how much audio we're putting out to the screen. ARIA Live is well. the biggest danger for audio going out to the screen. Actually, I mean, like, I'm sorry, but in VMware, for example, and I've seen this live or heard it live, but you know, you've got ARIA Live is very dangerous to use. That I agree. Is, yeah. So again, I, that's why I'm trying to take that off the table for a plugin that's going to go out to the world and uh, potentially be misused. Uh, but if you okay, let's keep going. Let's keep unexpected, going. Unexpected, but his point is really good on on input. Sorry. So if the user expects behavior, we are good. Thank you, David. Thank you. Driven wheels heading level three. All wheel drive left parent 47 right parent checkbox not checked. Front wheel drive left parent. Actually, uh, Matt, I wanted to show you the 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 price. Price heading level three. Um, what's been really impressive about your plugin is it's it's all keyboard accessible. So yeah, um, that's what I say. I mean, there on this sided keyboard you left right slider, keyboard 14, well. Okay, so this is the only thing. Let's see. Heading level three. On five. the price, I'm gonna tab to this. Left right slider 14,730.00. Um, it's just missing a label to this is 
this is one set of prices, and then left right slider, two hundred fifty five thousand seven hundred. That's another set of prices, right? It's probably the min and max, right? That's correct. Yep, it's a it's a range slider. So um, the only the what's missing here is, and I think this is true uh, in a lot of places. It's just the label is missing, like okay. minimum price, maximum price. Left right slider, fourteen thousand seven hundred thirty point oh oh. Let me just try. Let me enter, enter. on this. Fifteen thousand seven hundred thirty point oh oh. So it's really nice. I'm just arrow using the right arrow and the left arrow. Sixteen thousand seven hundred thirty point oh oh. Increasing the value. Seventeen thousand, eighteen thousand seven hundred thirty point oh oh. Okay, then I'm gonna enter. Left right slider two hundred fifty five thousand seven hundred thirty point oh oh. Enter. So it's great in terms of keyboard, but the context of like, I don't know what those are. And that's a pretty easy fix. Yeah, that's very yeah, so helpful. I just that in. You just need to throw some labels on the sliders, just like in the, I don't, it looks like you've been working with the ARIA working group stuff. Have you seen their ARIA examples? Anyway, I've seen a few. Yeah. yeah, so long story short, <laughs> Oh boy, I don't know how far back you want to go. So the plugin was built back in 2013. Um, oh, wow. Long time. Yeah, I actually wow. started working on this full time in 2015. Um, but basically, it started out with, I just had this idea of, oh, you know what? Checkboxes are hard to style. It'd be so much easier if they were just divs and you can just add CSS to it, add background images to it and make things so so easy. And <laughs> in hindsight, that was probably a mistake for, as you can tell, for cases like this versus using just um, standard HTML elements. Um, but yeah, years later, um, I mean, as if you, if you right click on those um, radio buttons there and you inspect them, you'll see that, that pretty much everything's a div. Um, radio mm -hmm. buttons, checkboxes, sev several other facet types. Um, so how we're doing that is, is it's basically just a div with a background image and style in a way to make it look like HTML form elements. Yeah, I um, mean, the ARIA, I'm just saying, you just need to add the ARIA label to the sliders. So yeah, I mean, you right, did, right. Yeah, that's the divs, divs and ARIA. And you just need to add the ARIA label. Uh, real quick, that sort by, you know that sort by filter that's up there? Yes. Yeah. That needs that's a label, true. right? So uh, I actually got upset when I saw the first <laughs> option. <laughs> Trying to act as a label, and you know what? That only works after that only works until um, she changes the option, and then that option, you know, doesn't label the yeah. formula. And so, uh, um, not that. Don't do that. Let me throw in. So, I just want you to. I, I this easiest thing to do is just use the label element. You know, I mean, you're already using a simple select element, which I love. So, so uh, if you I love just, your passion, huh? With I just love that element. Vehicle. Uh, oh, here. <laughs> Search tabs button menu. Toolbar. View site information. Address and search bar edit. Facet.com. Logo. List with seven items. Features link. Features and benefits. Of Trying to find out where. Bars demo heading level one. When you click where on the was the, um, the sort thing, Chris? No, it's uh, see, you can't find it because it's not labeled. Uh, left <laughs> right now it says Dave Holden. Right so, uh, so there you yeah, go, Matt. You can't right find it. Right that, so I just wanted to throw in, sorry, the sort by the words. Left 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 parent, Cadillac, the left parent, Chevrolet, left parent, six. Um, okay, we covered a lot of stuff. Um, Amber, are there things in the chat that um, I, I feel like we covered a lot of things that are all over the place. Um, one of the things that was really apparent when we were talking to Matt earlier was just um, trying to connect user experiences with the WCAG guidelines and with the ARIA examples. And that's something that really would help everyone um, just you know, have a, a more um, reliable path to an accessible experience. Um, so I know that Chris um, probably shared some links there in the chat about that. And I wanted to see if, if people on the call had um, questions about how to do that, how to get started with that. 
um, I think was, from, go ahead. Oh, there was a question about, does the back button work to load you through previous selections in the facet? And do you feel like that's important if you filtered to be able to hit back and go back to your prior filtered state? Let me see if there's, but there's no back, is there a back button on here? Reset button. No, sorry, reset. the back button in the browser. Oh. Well, so does it maintain, does filtering maintain a browser history? I don't think that's an accessibility question, though. That's really just a should, how should it work <laughs> for everybody question. Like, that's a I don't think I would think yeah. of doing that, though, right? Would most people wouldn't do that, right? Yeah, if it, if it works poorly for everybody, it's not an accessibility issue. So, reset button. Okay, so let me reset. Wait, David, actually, isn't it worse? <laughs> if it works poorly for everybody, isn't it worse? Cars demo vertical bar facet. Yeah. Cars demo level one when you It's all about the same experience. So, Matt, it's a lot of stuff. Um, what, what would help is tell me what would help in terms of. Uh, giving you some action items. I think the biggest one is just maybe some labeling be the first, right? And yeah, then... I've, I've got a lot of items for for fixing labels for the slider for various other elements for the sort box. Um, there's the um... I think the on input thing is your biggest problem, and I think. That's a conceptual if, if yeah. of live regions and right, you know, and I was mentioning that they're dangerous. They're dangerous when overused. Um, so you just need to, you need to employ, provide instructions and live regions or a combination of both that kind of explains what's going to happen when you check one of these checkboxes. So you don't violate on input and you don't, your users don't um, cause an unexpected change of context. Right. Because um, we're worried about an unexpected change of context here. So um, I think, yeah, the whole main behavior of your plugin is your worry, but this could be fixed with just telling the user what's going to happen when they. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, and then just the, the, a few headings to maybe easily navigate between selecting the criteria and seeing the results. Like that's one thing that's kind of missing here. So we're, Chris. we've been talking a lot about like actual standards and adhering to them. Um, I'm curious from you, Joyce, as to um, what would make your life easier in terms of browsing this page? Like would something like a, like a selection section make your life easier so you can easily see what you've already clicked and you can undo them or are there other huh. things we haven't well, thought of that? Um, the one thing, you know, the, what we just talked about is like really putting in sections that were meaningful here. So I would have, um, and I, I would know, okay, here's this, here's the area where I select options. And that's separated from here's where I see the results. Now, what you're saying is like a little summary of what's been selected. Mm -hmm. um, that actually might be pretty nice, right? Um, and I think I've seen that. Um, because for me to know all the different factors that are selected, I have to go to all the different areas, right? Exactly. Yeah. So like one little summary, that's, that's a great um, call out, Matt. Um, yeah. A one little section that says what I have selected, right? So we do actually and, have that feature, but for some idiotic reason, I didn't <laughs> add it to this page. I'm not sure why. Um, because you wanted to get yelled at. Yeah, it's space, right? You just wanted to save space, I bet, right? <laughs> but it would be maybe search results, like right in that the results area, right under there might be like the criteria that was that's displayed. I've been thinking about this a lot of the day, choice though. It, it's like the whole page is kind of a summary, right? Because they summarize like how many Acuras, how many Alfa Romeos. It's just like a long summary, but it's not up at the top, right? The problem is. Oh yeah. Well, the challenge for you is you is, is because there's no heading. This is such no a technical issue, but like she can't, 
she has, I've been watching her use this page and she has not been able to, you know, disassociate the content from the controls so much. Just because of simple, you know. Headings, I need headings. I love headings. <laughs> yeah. so it's almost Stop. like, and this is, I know, a challenge because you allow people to build out their facets like in their sidebars or on a page with short codes, right? Like there's a lot of different ways that users can, but it's almost like, I think you need to dynamically whatever the first facet group is, you need to have an, so these are all H3s. There should be an H2 above them. That's like filters, right? And, and then, but so you could provide instruction, which is telling users, hey, don't forget to put an H2 above your, right? But the reality is, is most people won't read that or see that, or they won't do it. So trying to figure out how could you dynamically do it, but only do it once and then, and then, and then above the results, that's easier, right? For you to have an H2, and then theoretically the title of each one of these is a heading three, maybe the link of, to the results page. Um, but I was sort of curious in this particular example, I think the order of the pages is, is that the, the icon filters that aren't really labeled, but you can have the numbers up at the top, um, those appear in the, like, in the DOM before the results. And then all of the other filters appear after the results. Yeah. I'm pretty sure because it's a sidebar that is after. And yeah, so, so that compounds it. Yeah, you're right. I think that compounds the whole, there's lack of separation. But yeah, yeah. if you get a group, if, I think I see where you're going. Like if, if this was all, basically if all the checkboxes and stuff were grouped together, they'd act like a summary because, you know. Yeah, so I don't, and I don't know. And this is, this is me like having basic coding, right? Like, would it be possible for all of those to be output together and then for you to somehow have a setting where they could say like, like use grid or, you know, so, I don't know, something like that to load certain elements above the results visually, but the, the order of them was, is actually, you know, I don't know. I don't know how so that- There is works. ARIA for right. this that's scary and I don't know. So there's, um, and I don't know, David or anybody else, if you guys have experience with ARIA, ARIA flow too, or I don't think that's a, there is, Aria that's supposed to do this, right? But so Aria is just one part of the puzzle. So there's browsers and assistive technology that have to also support a given Aria property. But yeah, I don't like trying to make an artificial order. Is yeah, my, my concern would be the keeping the reading order to make sense because not everybody who uses a screen reader is completely visually impaired. Mm -hmm. um, so you run into an issue there you certainly could load them in the DOM in order and then reposition them with CSS, um, you know, and, and get it that way. But again, reading order is, is really what my, my concern would be. Yeah, I mean, I think Amber, you called out um, having the selections that did confuse me. Like there were selections at the top, then there were some results and then more selections. So I didn't know the difference between the top selections and the bottom selections. Yeah. David, so David brought up a point that, and like, and I do this with um, working with Joyce all the time. There is, there are sighted screen reader users. They're partially mm -hmm. visible, partially sighted, or like we have a coworker that just he does it for cognitive reasons, right? So they're sort of they're looking. I, I, they they're seeing the visual order and the programmatic order together, and when they aren't harmonized, it's weird. Yeah. I, I think too, adding those headings, at least in my opinion, I don't know that they have to be visible. Like if you're worried, you're going to add those, you're going to release an update to the plugin. Everybody's going to be like, why do I now have these big H2s that I don't want? Like they could be screen reader yeah. only heading twos. So it yeah. wouldn't necessarily impact the live site mm -hmm. in a negative way for a sighted user, but it would impact. Well, I, I, I just see this is where we kind of get, the, this is where accessibility and design kind of clash because like design's always like, that's ugly, right? You know, and then we're like, is it really? And like, we're kind of it's, there right it's now. It's a weird thing though, right? When you've got a plugin like this with 40,000 sites on it, if he suddenly releases something that- Saying headings are ugly, but no. stuff, people it's just kind of, it. it's just kind of, Proving, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, okay, yeah, but um, yeah, not gonna lie, yeah. backwards compatibility can be kind of a. <laughs> well, I, I think if you if you think about the um, the styling separate from the the logical heading order, I think that helps. Um, 
it, it's certainly preferable to have the visually the headers going from largest to smallest as you go from H1 to H6. But when you get into these little conflicts with uh, you know the design team and how are we going to do this, I think it's more important that you're you're making it as as accessible and as usable for your broadest base of users, and certainly having a header that's smaller in font size than it would normally be, but programmatically in H2, um, I think that would get your best benefit if if that really is a design uh, consideration. That's uh, doesn't you level don't access do have a best way. practice against that. David, doesn't have a level access have a best practice against that? I, well, I'm fairly pretty you know, sure I've been they in do. for a while. I'm pretty like, sure um, they do. Like I like and yeah. and, um, and so yeah, I'm still doing my onboarding there. I'm I came on with uh, Carl, who's speaking uh, in, in January, so I'm, I'm eager to hear him speak. Um, yeah, I mean, they have a best practice for that. So I'm sorry to disagree, but like it's. You you know he, you're trying to make the design team happy, but like, uh, um, someone will flag that for illogical heading order, and they'll say that you know your font size you know you're trying to make a um, H1 you know appear you know visually appears an H2 or, or H3 size and you know yeah. I can imagine all kinds of tests. There's all kinds of colleagues flagging that you know. <laughs> across many accessibility companies. And I know Level Access has a best practice for it too. Hey, Joyce, one thing you didn't touch on is how does the pagination work for you with being able to move through results? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, one thing here, I remember I just saw one, two, three, seventy-seven or something left like that. Nine, right, parent, check, box, just go check, look at that. Parent, left parent, link, occur, from dollar, MPG, colon, power, colon, link, occur, up, from dollar, four, MPG, power, colon, link, alpha, Romeo, from dollar, MPG, power, colon, link, audio, cube, from dollar, four, MPG, power, colon, link, one. Okay, here's the pages. So I don't know that these are pages. I mean, I kind of do because I think link two, link three. They need to be labeled again, <laughs> right? Um, link. So you'd want to yeah. do something like go to page two or something or see like load page two of results, something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess I have seen that uh, go to page and then link. Link three. Or like, uh, what do they say? Like two page two results or? Link two. Or like page link two three. of 29. Yeah. Link, link page link three 29. of 29. That link kind of greater, thing. greater. Oh, greater, greater. Combo box, left parent, oldest, right parent. Okay, here was a combo box. Link greater, greater. What is this greater, greater? Oh, that's, um. To go to yeah, the well, there, you, there, you, there you go. You don't understand the name of the button. Oh, what was that, Matt? It's the, oh gosh, that's that's a great question. It's either <laughs> good, go to the very last page or go to the next page. Um, oh, and it definitely needs a, a better label. Behind. Yeah, most of the stuff on uh, this is this labeling. Like that would be the first part, and that's not going to change any of the visuals. And that would be a really great place to start and make a a, a big impact. Um, the vis the changes that would make that you're going to you know consider to make visual. You got to be thoughtful, right, about how to do that because you're impacting a lot of people. Um, and there's no one answer. There's no one answer that fits all, as you could hear from the conversation today. Um, but just, you know, going in with that open mindedness of how would someone with, you know, navigate this with um, a screen reader? Or how would someone who might not understand uh, the visual page? Or you know the content. How what kind of situations would they uh, need to get supported? And really, accessibility is is not the the best way. Is not by looking at the guidelines and trying to checkbox all of those. It's not going by a checklist. It's trying to understand people. And once you do that, then you know your possibilities are endless. So I'll leave you with that. <laughs> But um, I'm really proud of, of Matt for um, just being willing to open himself and the code up here in front of everyone to, to see, expose the problems and, um, and to acknowledge that there are problems. And I just wanted to thank you for that. So 
Oh, thank you all. I mean, you're the ones being generous with your time and kind of showing ways to improve, not just for you all, but for, for everyone who needs these accessibility adjustments. So um, I'll do my part to get these things fixed and hopefully it'll make life a little better for, for those that need it. That'll be great. I think you did great, Matt. I mean, you know, you started this a long time ago and you just read a little ARIA. You didn't even look at like WCAG. Um, to Joyce's point about connecting the standard to um, the user, I know it's a long read, but actually WCAG, I think, does that. You know, they have these sections mm -hmm. called P perceivable, uh, uh, sections of perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust, right? And this all just when you look through them, just even like in the sidebar in the table of contents, it all just kind of like, oh, that's just something that impacts the user. It's just, it's all user-friendly language. It's just uh, kind of a, a, a long read, but that spec is just like what we're trying to achieve. It doesn't talk about the technology. It doesn't get into Ajax, JavaScript. It doesn't get into that. It just said what we're, you know, what is expected of um, uh, technology for it to be accessible. Yeah. Great job, everyone. David, thank you for all your commentary too. It really helped. Sure, yeah. Just proves that uh, sometimes you can split hairs on this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we might need to have David give a talk in the future. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So I kept, I was like, oh, I should have spotlight you, but you didn't have your video on, so I'm, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah, it's, I was just finishing up dinner, so unless you want to see a dinner plate in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you again to our amazing speakers and everyone who's participated in the conversation. We've also had some really great conversation in the chat. Um, just as a quick, actually, do you mind stop sharing your screen, Joyce? Because oh, it makes yeah. our interpreter a little bit bigger in case we have anyone watching the sign language. There you go. Awesome. So um, we will work on getting corrected captions for this, and then we'll have the video up. And I will pull the chat transcript, and we'll put the chat transcript up as well, because I think that will be helpful for everyone, because there was so much great conversation in there. Um, as a quick reminder, our next meetup is on January 6th. It's going to be at 8 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central in the US. And it will be Carl Groves speaking about accessibility overlays and um, the realities and fantasies maybe of accessibility overlays. Uh, if anyone needs anything in between then, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, if you know anyone who might be interested in sponsoring, as I mentioned, we currently do not have an ASL interpretation sponsor for beginning in January, and we'd love to be able to maintain it. So you can email me, I'm amber at equalizedigital.com, or you can reach out on the meetup group if you have any ideas about who I can contact or if your company might be interested in sponsoring. So thanks so much, everybody, and I hope everyone has a great night. Thank you. Thanks, you too. Yeah, thanks. Thank you all for joining.